Hey folks, Trip here. Today I'm at Kent Power Sports on the far northeast side of San Antonio on I-35. And if you're interested in a brand new Honda, Suzuki, or Yamaha, this is a great place to come. However, they also sell a few used bikes. And they just happen to have one of the best looking used bikes I think I've ever seen. A 2015 Harley Softail Deluxe. And a big thank you to these fine folks for agreeing to let me do a test ride of this absolutely gorgeous bike. And before I hop on this beauty and take a spin, I'd like to take a couple of minutes and tell you a bit more about her. This bike is equipped with a 103 cubic inch twin cam motor. It's actually a 103B, which means it's balanced and should ride quite a bit smoother. And it's reported to produce about 78 peak horsepower and 97.4 pounds of torque. The dry weight of the bike is about 695 pounds and the curb weight when she's all ready to go full of oil and gas is about 730. And for comparison, that's about 200 pounds heavier than a Kawasaki Vulcan S and about 25 pounds heavier than a Harley Dyna. The bike has a very comfortable plush seat unladen. The seat height is 26 inches and laden I believe it's 24 and a half. So a low slung bike which should make for a pretty comfortable riding position. With the exception of the sissy bar and the backrest the bike is completely stock and the only upgrade is an absolutely gorgeous paint job. It's got a metallic flake blue, a metallic flake pearl white with pen striping. It's got a six-speed transmission, ABS brakes, an oversized rear brake pedal, full-length floorboards, and a whole lot of chrome. Now, normally I don't care for bikes with a bunch of chrome, but this is truly an exception. I think the abundance of chrome on this bike works extremely well with the two-tone paint job, the spoked wheels with white wall tires, and the triple lights up front. With its big fenders and chrome accent to the tombstone tail light in the back, this bike just drips of old style, classicness, and beauty. Again, I think Harley has really outdone themselves with this Softail Deluxe. And if there's a more attractive stock Harley available, I'd sure like to see it. It's got a very retro looking instrument panel. The numbers on the speedometer look sort of art deco. The bike just looks like it rolled out of the 1940s or 50s. This particular bike has just shy of 3,500 miles. There's trip A, trip B, range, 203 miles left on this tank of gas. There's the clock. There's a gear indicator and tachometer and back to the speedometer. To control it, you just hit the trip button right there. Other things that I think contribute beautifully to the styling are the big fat gas tank. This bad boy holds five gallons. Coming back to the seat, nice and wide, looks very comfortable. And you've got sort of these beach or surf handlebars, which are nice and wide. One of the advantages to these handlebars, besides the way they look, is that it gets your mirrors out a little bit further, which provide better visibility behind you. Comes with a standard heel toe shifter, and new for 2015 is the Easy Up Kickstand. Up front, we've got a 300 millimeter disc brake, ABS brakes, you can tell by the black ring there. In the rear, we've got a 292 millimeter disc, and of course, ABS brakes in the rear as well. Polished chrome oil tank, rocker head covers, polished chrome breather covers, lines, plates, exhaust, and a lot of really attractive chrome trim. More chrome on the tank, more chrome on the floorboards, more chrome on the controls, more chrome on the covers, chrome fender guard, standard chrome rack, more chrome trim. It just goes on and on. The bike sure starts like a typical Harley, kind of lurches forward a little bit, a very authoritative start. And in first gear, it's kind of got that Harley whine. Uh, keep in mind, I am used to riding an 09 Harley Dyna and a Kawasaki Vulcan S650. So that's kind of where I'm coming from on this test ride. My main two references of comparison. A couple of first observations. This bike is very comfortable. My butt feels great. Also, the seating position is very comfortable. And only being 24 and a half inches high on the seat height, it just feels good. I'm 5 foot 11. I can very easily flat foot this bike with probably 
four or five or six inches of spare, God knows. It just feels nice. Even though it's a heavy bike, it's got a low center of gravity, and it feels uh, a little bit better than my Dyna does. Better seating position, more comfortable seat. Now, I don't know if you can hear it because the exhaust pipe is in the back, and my camera is on the front of my helmet on my chin. The stock exhaust on this bike really sounds nice. Now, I've listened to the exhaust on the new Milwaukee 8s, but I think this bike has a better sound to it. I tell you, man, this bike has got some torque. It's really responsive. I think I'm in third gear here, and I twist this throttle, and it wants to push me into the back of the seat. I'm only doing 55 miles an hour, but you can really tell that this bike has a lot of torque. Feels good. The other thing I noticed right away is it doesn't have nearly the shake of my Dyna, and I'm very impressed with how smooth this bike rides and how smooth the engine is. Shifting gears, you get that big solid clunk when you put it in first or second. It's sort of a reassuring clunk. It doesn't really bother you. This clutch works really well, nice and smooth too. I tell you, I'm impressed with the acceleration. We're doing uh, 55 miles an hour, and I'm sure the wind noise is just going to beat this microphone to death. Up to about 65, and I'm in sixth gear. Really smooth ride. Now, the one thing that I'm finding I don't like with this bike is with these wider handlebars and no windshield, I feel like a sail. I can really feel that wind pushing on my chest. It's not overpowering, but I can imagine if I was doing 75 or 80, that it would be pretty bad. And if I were to do that for any distance, I'd probably wear me out pretty quick. Oh, it downshifts nice and smooth, really smooth. You can hear that whine, that Harley whine in first gear. It just kind of Same way on the Dyna. Oh, that engine sounds good. So far, I really like this thing. Now, just to show you the controls, you've got the trip meter right here. There's the gear indicator with the tack. It says right now that I am in fourth and I'm doing 2260 RPMs at 45 miles an hour. That seems about right. Here's the high beam and the low beam right here. You have turn signals for both left and right. They're separate and uh, I believe they're self-canceling. Let's see if that is the case. Yeah, there it goes. The bike does not have cruise control, and I don't know that I would really be bummed about that. I've never had a motorcycle with cruise control, so I certainly wouldn't miss it. Now, the one thing that I really love about this bike, but I hope I never have to use, are the ABS brakes. I believe that they were standard in 2015. This bike, I think, is about an inch longer in the wheelbase and about an inch longer overall than my Dyna Fat Bob, but it, it just it seems to handle better. The lower seat height, the lower center of gravity, it just makes for a more nimble bike. What do we have up here? A guy on a scooter. Ah, we'll give him the wave. Hey, buddy. I'm loving this seat. The seat is nice and wide, nice and soft, and it's kind of got that deep pocket. It kind of cradles your butt. It gives you pretty good support on your lower back and the tailbone. Um, one thing, again, I really like about these mirrors on these wide handlebars is I can see real well. They get the job done. I can see what's behind me really easy. Another thing I'm impressed with are these brakes. I know in 2015, they had improved the brakes versus the earlier models. They beefed them up. I believe they put bigger discs on them. They went from a, uh, a two-piston front brake to a four-piston. And I think they upped the size of the disc from 292 or something like that to 300. Where the brakes in general are very capable. And so far, I'm really happy with them. Another thing that just looks nice, I like these three lights up here. You've got an oversized, I think that's a seven and a half inch headlamp and you've got the two auxiliary lights I'm, I'm curious as to how they are at night just how bright they are in 2015 they were an LED they're halogen now one thing I find a little weird is that if you want to turn off the auxiliary lights you've got this real old-school toggle switch that looks like somebody uh, drilled a hole in shop class and just put that there as an afterthought. That's kind of a disappointment. There is a little bit of texture to this road, some bumps, some small potholes. You do feel the road. You still have a little bit of that Harley shake. I'll tell you, when I, when I ride the, the Dyna Fat Bob and I try to mount a GoPro camera up here on the handlebars, the thing just shakes to death and you can see the, the camera wiggling and you can see the rear view mirror wiggling. This thing is just smooth. The 103B is a twin cam, obviously, and it's balanced, and it's hard mounted to the frame. And then with the Milwaukee 8, I believe they had the balanced engines and they had the rubber mountings. They sure don't beat this bike by much if they do.
this deluxe has 16 inch wheels front and back the one thing that i don't care for on this bike is also something i do care for it's the lace steel wheels and that simply means it's got spoked wheels why do i like them well they look fantastic the problem is with spoked wheels you have tubed tires and if you get a flat out in the middle of nowhere you're in trouble because you can't fix that tire yourself you've got to call somebody you're in a world of hurt okay so back to the controls you've got the horn oh wow that horn is loud i like it loud horns save lives it's right above the turn signal and i could very easily see myself trying to go for the horn in an emergency and accidentally hitting the turn signal which really wouldn't do me a world of good okay we're coming up to a set of railroad tracks here i don't see a train coming and i'm going to maintain speed and see how she feels not bad very smooth didn't really feel a thing sixth uh gear indicator there we're doing about 55 really impressed with the acceleration on this bike uh, a little bit ago i had it up to almost 80 miles an hour and from 60 to 80 really smooth and quick acceleration so i'm i'm not one of those guys that likes to go out and ride 100 miles an hour to be honest with you i'm happiest when i'm putting along at the speed limit i like to just relax and look where i'm going and look at the scenery and I, I think that's why they call them cruisers all that top end power really isn't that important to me unless i need to get out of an emergency situation this bike to me so far seems to have what it takes i do notice in the difference between the 103 and the 96 in my fat bob i can tell there's more power to this bike there's more speed there's more power there's more torque i think it's got about 10 more horsepower holds either 5 or 5.1 gallons i believe it gets 42 miles to the gallon so that'll give you about 210 miles to the tank that would work for me and this bike does have a gas gauge some harleys don't have gas gauges so just to give you an idea of how much this bike shakes i am going to start it up and we're going to do the old harley mirror shake test shakes a little bit on the startup and it's got just a little vibration that is really no different than the new milwaukee 8 motors and i've done this with them in fact i've got a video coming out comparing the two one of the little improvements they made on this bike versus the 2014 softtail deluxe is the improvement to the kickstand they added about a two or three inch little antenna uh, onto this kickstand makes this kickstand a lot easier to find with your boot and a lot easier to deploy this bike just handles very nice another thing i've noticed that's different than my dyna is the fact that this bike seems to run a little cooler my butt doesn't feel as hot the oil tank on this bike the oil reservoir is right beneath the seat the milwaukee eights are a little different they don't have the oil reservoir right on your butt so they ride a little cooler between the cooling fins of this engine just the engine heat in general the exhaust and that oil cooler right under your butt uh harleys can uh can uh, be a little warm so a little review first and foremost is the styling just love it next up is the ride this bike is incredibly smooth it doesn't shake like the quintessential harley I mean, you feel a little bit of that shake. It reminds you that you're on a Harley. You expect it to be there. In fact, I think if it's a Harley, you want some of it to be there. But this bike doesn't have much at all. I also like the power of the torque, the horsepower, the acceleration. It's all stock and I, I really don't need anything else. I mean, this is an authoritative, powerful bike that accelerates. And when you're up in sixth gear, doing 70 miles an hour, you're doing about, uh, you know 2200 2250 rpm it's just powerful and smooth and nice the gearbox and the clutch are also very smooth and i'm really glad this thing has six speeds the seating position and the seat comfort these floorboards are long and they're nice and like i said i'm five foot eleven and the seating position is just perfect for me my knees are not too low and they're not too high on the tank the seat is very comfortable been on the bike uh, a little over 20 miles i'm still feeling really good i've got a feeling i could be on this bike most of the day and it wouldn't bother me it handles like a dream this bike does not seem like it's a 730 pound bike it's very maneuverable that low center of gravity it rides like a bike that weighs a lot less and has a much shorter wheelbase than it actually does 
Acceleration out the wazoo. Torquey the pig. Corner's nice. Next thing I really like on this bike are the brakes. They're just powerful. They grab well. I feel very confident stopping this bike in a short distance. Knowing that it's got ABS just gives me a big sense of confidence. A heavy bike that accelerates well, has a lot of power, rides really smooth, is very maneuverable, has a great riding position and great brakes. I don't know what more you could ask for. I really don't. I'm not going to say that uh, I give the suspension an A+. Um, there's a lot of Japanese bikes that would blow this bike away when it comes to suspension. But overall ride quality, I score really high. I like it. And most of the, uh, the roads that you would ride a big bike on like this would not be as bumpy. This is a, uh, a back road. And if you've seen me riding behind some trucks, these are gravel trucks. And there's a lot of quarries right next, uh, right next to this road. And these big trucks really tear up the asphalt. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring the bike back here is to get a feel uh, for how it did on these on these rough roads. And I'll tell you, it's uh, it's done surprisingly well. It's uh, it's impressed me. So what do I not like about this bike? Well, not a lot, to be honest with you. I don't like the heavy clunk going from neutral to first or first to second. But past that, it's really smooth. That, that's not really a big issue. It's got that Harley whine, you know, when you're in first gear. I don't particularly care for that, but it doesn't bother me. Not really a big deal. The one thing, uh, and I don't know that this has gone away with the, the new Milwaukee 8 and its transmission, but it is virtually impossible to find neutral on a damned Harley. If you're just sitting there at idle and you're in first gear, I mean, it takes me half a dozen tries. Maybe I'm retarded. I don't know. I, I don't understand why that is. I had the same issue on my Fat Bob, same issue on other Harleys I've ridden. I don't, I don't understand why that is. If I were to buy this bike, I wouldn't change a lot. The mirrors, I don't think they need to be changed at all. The seat, the seat is very comfortable. Of course, uh, you know, I haven't gone 200 miles. I haven't ridden three or four hours, but so far it really feels nice. So I would not change out the seat. Windshield. That would all depend on what you're going to use the bike for. Is this going to be a bar hopper? Is this going to be just a, an about town bike? Are you going to, you know, stick to the back roads? If the answer is yes, I don't think you need a windshield. Unless you're going to be on the interstate or traveling an awful long way and be on the bike a long time. Or if it's, you know, you're out in the rain or the elements. I don't think a windshield is, is really necessary on this bike. Saddlebags. Saddlebags are so helpful. Uh, and if you don't get saddlebags, you know, maybe... Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to put a tank bag on this baby, but if you had a windshield, a windshield bag, or a swing arm bag, or a tail bag, something on the sissy bar, something like that to get a little storage. But I tell you, I would not want to put uh, some permanent hard bags on this bike. I think they would just screw up the beautiful lines of this thing. It would draw attention away from the beauty of the bike. You wouldn't be able to see the two-tone paint on the rear fender. I just think it would uh, do more harm than good. As far as exhaust goes, I'm one of those guys that's sort of a, a middle-of-the-road person when it comes to loud pipes save lives. I, I, I don't argue against it, and I don't argue for it. I don't really know the answer to that. There's people that have credible arguments on both sides of the tracks there. As far as the performance, like I said, I've, I've had it up to about 80 miles an hour, uh, and it just feels wonderful. It's got all the power I need. I don't know that I would need a, uh, a stage one, two, three, four, big bore, you know, whatever. I really don't think it needs any of that, at least for my liking. If I owned this bike and ever had it above 90 miles an hour, it would be a surprise to me. I don't need that extra power. I think it sounds great. The big plus is you really don't need to spend a lot of money fixing up or changing or modding this bike. I'm happy with this bike the way it is. If I bought it, it would save me a lot of money. I wouldn't have to buy any of that stuff. But the only couple of things I would put on this bike would probably be some LED headlights and tail lights. Um, I don't know if this bike comes with a security system or not. If it didn't, I would put one of those on it. And I think I would put a pair of chrome engine guards on this bike. If you did get it out on the highway, you'd have an additional place to put your feet so your legs wouldn't cramp up or get tired so let me let me draw this up in a conclusion I really really like this bike um, if I could afford a bike like this I would have one I love the way it looks I love the way it rides I like the brakes I like the way it handles I like the way the controls are laid out it's just it's a really good bike it's got abs brakes it's got plenty of power plenty of torque the only problems i have with this bike are really small little nits nothing uh that would prevent me from buying it this bike is ready to roll the day you bought it 
you don't really have to mod it. It looks beautiful. It's very functional. In my opinion, at least for me, it doesn't need any more power. It's got six gears. It's got the 103 balanced engine. It doesn't shake. The stock exhaust and the engine combination, I think, are almost perfect. It could be a shade louder with a little bit more rumble to it, but I give it an A-. minus. I'm, I'm happy with it. I certainly wouldn't spend the money on it uh, to change anything. So there you go, folks. The 2015 Harley Softail Deluxe. This bike is available at Kent Power Sports just outside of San Antonio. I'll put their phone number at the end of this video in the details down below if this bike interests you. Give them a call. Whatever you do, don't tell me that you bought it because you'll just disappoint me because I'll be honest with you, I'd love to have this thing. So on a scale of one to 10, I would rate this bike a 10 for looks. I'd give it a, an eight and a half to a nine for ride smoothness. I'd give it uh, eight and a half to nine for handling. Overall, I'd give it about a 9.5. I think this bike has really deserved it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, people. If you have, please give it a like, a big fat thumbs up. And if you like this kind of stuff in general, please subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support Trip on Two Wheels, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. I would really, really appreciate that. And until next time, this is Trip on Two Wheels saying ride safe and ride often.